Kalimera, Kalispera, whatever time you're watching, this is Mapana. This is a very, very special edition because on this podcast, as you guys are fully aware, we do things different. We break the mold when it comes to media in Cyprus and we are soon to be the best out there, hands down. It's going to take us time, but we're going to do it. And we are growing. We're growing as a brand. We're growing as a media entity. And right now, the two gentlemen you see in the screen in front of you, Sodiri, a good friend of mine, who's making his debut on This Is Mappa. He's a Hello, budding guys. journalist, and he's going to be one of the best. Mark my words. Sodiri, how are you doing, bro? Hello, bro. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Uh, looking forward, mate. Looking forward to it. And you're happy to be back in Cyprus. I in the lovely weather. You're not having to worry about rain. I like rob it. robberies like you do in <laughs> England. Happy days. <laughs> happy days. Happy days. Well, bro, I'll let you take this take the floor with this one because you arrange this very, very special guest. I'm absolutely sure. thrilled to have him on board. He is very, very creative. He's got a, a brain on him. And he knows a bit about ball. Yeah. So come mm -hmm. on, so did him we'll introduce your guest. Come on, my guy. So today we have my friend, ex-teammate, ex-flatmate as well, David, David McGee as Warburton. Hello, David. How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. I think I'm doing well, doing well. Right now in the south of Spain, a little bit of sun over here. Um, I'm feeling uh, great right now. Uh, happy to join today and, and hopefully we, we have a great conversation. 100 percent bro uh, we really appreciate your time thank you for being here with us we know that you are a busy man uh, working all the time uh, but to be honest we know each other since 2015 was it 2015 2016 when you first decided uh, for yeah it had to be like like six years ago at least six years ago uh, i think it was and that was yeah I'm not mistaken so I was in I was in uh, Toy Academies in second division, and I was about to make my move to the first uh, team. And David just signed at this point with Toy, and yeah. we used to live together, eat together, and going to training together. We used to do everything together. It was it was good good times, good times. Yeah, and yeah, good memories, now, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. certainly an, it's certainly an interesting trail of events isn't it because you mentioned you're in Thoi like Adamia's academy and and David you know I assume you came from Spain originally but the surname Warburton yeah. is a very British surname do you have any British roots by any chance yeah yeah so so my mom she's from Edinburgh so okay. so I was like I was born and raised in Spain but in my family we've always spoken like English like so my mom used to speak with used to speak to us in English when we were growing up so so that's the reason why I speak both uh, languages. Because my, my dad used to speak in Spanish and my mom used to speak in English. So, so yeah, but that's the reason why I wore in And that's also the reason why I look more British than Spanish also. <laughs> Bro, I'll tell you what, I've been to Edinburgh a few times because one of my friends was the assistant coach at Hibernian. And for nice. anyone that hasn't been to Edinburgh, it is beautiful. Wow. Honestly, it's one of beautiful. the most beautiful cities in the UK, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Like for me, it's one one of the best cities to be in. Like, I mean, the bad thing. I mean, if I have to compare it to Murcia, because now I'm living in Murcia, the weather here that. is like it's summer all, all year. But but Edinburgh has like very nice places to be yeah. in and, and to see, to eat, to. Yeah, it's incredible. It's an incredible place. So, how did you end up in Cyprus playing football? And this is this is a, a very interesting one for me. Anyway. Yeah. I would, yeah. I would ask, so, um, before we go huh? with this question, let me ask how actually you became a footballer. How did you start in football? Like how how you went into football? Uh, well, like you know, you, you know, you know, like how big football is in Spain. So growing up, uh, like I, I don't remember. I had I don't have any memories like growing up without playing football. Like I used to, because um, my dad is a is a football freak, so we used to play a lot of football uh, with him when we were growing up, me and my brother. And then uh, we signed with the with the team in, in Murcia, Real Murcia, which is like the main team here. And so we we did all the academy with them, uh, right. and then 
I went with the national team of Scotland. I went with the under 19s and under 21s. And after that, I signed in the third division here in Spain. And then from there, I did one good season and I went to, to Cyprus. Was it so the that was how I started and that's how I ended in Cyprus. Was it El, El yeah? Palmar? Was it El Palmar, the team in, yeah. in Spain? Yeah, 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 El Palmar. It was the, 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 the yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you had a, a great yeah, good memory. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah? You have a good memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, then, how how come you move in Cyprus? Did they approach you like in the summer uh, uh, with agent, with your agent? And, uh, yeah, so... Mm-hmm. So I had so I had an agent, but uh, I had an agent by the time, and uh, so I was looking to move away from Spain because I felt like, it's like obviously there's such a high level over here, and and a lot of people playing like in the second teams of Valencia, Maria, uh, Real Madrid. So all these guys have like good. Team. Or, or you stay in Spain and you're going to get like an average salary or you try to move outside. And, and because I've always been the kind of person who likes to be traveling and, and like, I also, obviously I speak English, so, so I can, I can easily get to, 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 to speak with the people around me wherever I go. Uh, I told my agent I wanted to leave Spain. So he did a few moves in, in Cyprus in Greece and, and then, Toy Lagadami has got, got interested in, in me and, and, and I went. So how, how was your experience in Cyprus? I know uh, we said before you had the shoulder injury, the long time shoulder injury, and things didn't went mm. as planned mm. or as expected to. But tell us a bit about your experience in Cyprus. Yeah. Experience was was, uh, was great. Like I like Cyprus. As a, yeah, if you, I mean, in terms of like, if you go, for example, to Mallorca or to Menorca here in Spain, it's an island, so things are a little bit more chilled. People are more relaxed. Food is great. Uh, so, I mean, to live there, I liked it. Uh, for the same reason is, is you, you can have some difficulties with the teams. For example, like they pay late. Uh, they, you know, is because uh, like everything is so relaxed, but I like Cyprus. Uh, also, um, the time I was there, uh, I was very lucky. I met some very good people uh, in Cyprus, like yourself, Sotiris, and also I remember like Nando, like uh, Angelos, like so. So we, I met like good friends over there. Um, I, I I feel sad. I had to leave. Like, like I was only there for like half a season because I had to leave for for like injuries reasons. But I mean the time I was. there I, I liked it okay if you had to if you had to rate cyprus league from one out to ten how would you rate cyprus second division or first division if I, because if i'm not mistaken you you were watching some games in uh, the f- first division when you are back in here if i'm not mistaken second division i remember it like uh i remember second division like I remember, like good level in second division. Like even myself, I knew some players that were also playing against me in Spain. That also traveled to to Cyprus to play in second division. So they were also playing there from Spain. Uh, and then obviously first division. Um, I think also for Spanish players, it's a it's a nice uh, league to go to. I have, I have some friends now that that uh, might make might make a move to to Cyprus this summer to play in first division. So. I think I think it's a it's a good it's a good league. I think I would say it's a good league, both divisions, like first and second. How how would you rate it out of ten? Um, like I would say at least second division, it was the one I played. At least a seven, at least. That's good. I would say between yeah. seven. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say seven. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as we said before, you had the long time shoulder injury, right? Yeah. So does anyone in Cyprus help you to deal with it? Like um, it, was, it so it, it was a bit, it was a bit of a of a difficult situation because like I had this injury, um, and from the team, like from Toy, they told me that that they 
they had a, a doctor who could handle the, the surgery. The thing is, like, I had to pay the surgery. So, so when when that happened, it was like, no, I'm not going to pay the surgery. Like, I was I was playing with the team when I got sur- when I got the injury. You know, it, it wasn't me like doing some stupid stuff outside the outside the game. It was like playing. I had the, this injury, so so I'm not going to pay for the for the doctor to to do the surgery. So I said, okay, let me let me check in Spain if I could get the surgery done. So in Spain, I had this doctor who also did one surgery in me like years ago. So I came here, did the surgery. Uh, but then we had some differences with the payments of uh, my salary. Because like they stopped paying me the months I was out in Spain. So so I said, okay, if that's going to be the case, so um, I, I might well not come back and, and that's it. End of story, you know. Yeah. I'm sad because like I have like my, my T-shirts, like the... The game T-shirts uh, and the locker room. I had also my my football boots in the lock and the room, like in the locker room. I, I left all that stuff uh, in Cyprus, and some of them were important for me because, like for example, my football boots uh, were the ones I played with when I was in the national team in Scotland. So so they were, they mean something to me, and I left all that. And obviously, I tried to to pay like a package to send back home, but. It never really happened. So some, no, so yeah. someone might have my boots right now over there in Cyprus. But, oh, yeah. If you got David's boots, send them back. Send them yeah. back. We'll put a reward yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, what do you that, would, that would be. That would be. Yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> David, so, I've got a question about your your time in Cyprus regarding your your footballing uh, career, but also what you did in your personal life because. I know that a lot of Spanish players have been to Cyprus, played in Cyprus, and they've loved the culture. They they, they find it very similar to back home. To Spain. But, yeah. yeah, but in, in Cyprus, things are done a little bit different. But, you know, you, you were with Sodiri. I, I think that you guys were, were flatmates or something along the line. You guys lived yeah. together. But what did you do in your, your spare time? Because I, I'm, I'm assuming football wasn't just your only priority. Clearly, with your business yeah. now that was launched in 2019, you were doing something in the background. So I'm guessing you were preparing for life after football because, you know, yeah. it's a short career. So what was it that you were doing in Cyprus behind the scenes, off the field, so to speak? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So as you said, as you said, like football is, is, is a short life career. So um, I've always been very conscious about this, obviously because, uh, I was in the like I was in the, like in Real Madrid or Barcelona where you can earn as much money as you can not spend in your life. So, but I, I knew I had to to do something once the the football end. Uh, so I was like working on a few projects. One of them was uh, my fashion brand, and the other one was uh, working with as a creative director for a tattoo artist named Ganga, uh, Ganga Tadu. Uh, so I was like kind of working as a creative director as well as manager of him. And so, so yeah, so in my spare time, I was just like uh, documenting myself, like learning a bit, like watching, you know, YouTube, YouTube videos, like as much as I could to, to get some knowledge about the, about the, you know, the fashion industry as well as the, the management side of stuff for, for Ganga and, and also drink a lot of coffee. Like I was drinking a lot of coffee in Cyprus, like like ice Preto coffee. espresso, right? <laughs> uh, but but yeah, that that was that was my 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 day to day over there. So when it comes to the the fashion industry, again, we're gonna we're gonna touch on that in just a moment. But I just want to stay within your yes. your time in Cyprus in terms of the the creative side of things, because obviously your football career was a with the main priority, but you had a plan to yeah. fall back. When it came mm-hmm. to you in these YouTube videos and and finding creative ideas, which I would assume that you were doing, were there any artists or any people in either in fashion or music or whatever industry that were kind of an influence to you? Was there anyone that you saw and you thought, yeah. ah, for me, Kanye West is up there. I don't care what people say. Yeah, but... I, 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 I was going to say that, like, for uh, like by the time I was in Cyprus, obviously Kanye West was was doing was starting all this Yeezy movement and and he was like uh, doing all this impact in the fashion industry 
and and because also I'm a huge fan of him, also his music is so I, I would say Kanye West. And then thanks to Kanye, I got to meet people like Jerry Lorenzo from Fear of God or or some other fashion designer. So so but I would say Kanye started my like my lessons in the fashion industry through the YouTube uh, videos. He's a genius. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. I don't care. Nah, what I would say the same. I, yeah, I support. I support that. I support that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, I've got one more question before Sodiri continues this because I know he's he's got loads of questions and you're a busy yeah. guy, so we don't want to take up too much of your time. No, 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 no but, worries, no worries. <laughs> but in terms of the the your playing days in Cyprus, I'm assuming you didn't know what to expect in terms of not just the quality, but the pitches, the atmospheres. As I said before, in Cyprus, things are very, very different. Was there anything that made your eyebrows stand like raised in thinking, what the bloody hell have I done? Why have I come here? I'm, I'm sure there must be a few stories. Um, like I, I was like, I, I don't remember which, uh, who was the team we played against. It was, uh, I knew it was kind of a derby. It was like Tola Kadamias against another team. It was like a derby. I, I, I don't... Right. Right, yeah. And and I remember, like, when we were heading the the, the stadium, like the Toy Kadamias stadium, uh, I remember, like, like buses from the other team and, and you know, like, lightning and, and, like, everything. I was like... I didn't. I, I wasn't expecting this. Like, and it was, and also it was, it was such a uh, like, like the, the atmosphere in the and this in the stadium was like first division atmosphere. And for me, that was that was like the closest experience I had as a professional player. You know, because like you you could see like it was so tense the game. It was for me. It was a great experience that one. I would say I would say that one. Yeah. Superb, brilliant, brilliant. So, Diri, over to you, bro. Sorry about that. I just had to get that one in because a lot of people tell me stories about Cyprus and <laughs> never surprises me. But to look on, yeah. to, to see their faces when they're thinking back on it, it's, 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 it's priceless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, before, before I will attach in the clothing, uh, in your clothing brand and stuff, I will, I will ask, if you don't mind, when, when you retire, <laughs> Like when you take the decision to retire, how easy was uh, or difficult was for you to take this decision? Uh, for, for me, for me, it was it was a, it was an easy decision to be honest. Like, because um, I'm I'm the kind of person who, who thinks a lot about making decisions. So so I I try to fig I try to visualize every scenario, like every possible scenario. Once I make the decision, so when I was uh, thinking about just like finishing football um for me how, how i thought it in my and myself it was like i don't have the motivation to be like a first division professional footballer so so probably i'm not gonna i'm, I'm not gonna uh, earn as much money as i need to to have an easy life in the future from football uh, from the other side i do have motivation to start my brand i do have motivation to work as a creative director for ganga so so for me, it was an easy decision. Like, and from there, I never, I never regret like leaving football. Obviously, I miss it sometimes because I have friends who who still who still are professional footballers, and I see them play. And, and sometimes I have like that feeling of like, wow, I would like to be playing football. But I mean, I'm I'm the kind of person who who always tries to make decisions and never look back. You know. Nice. That's good. That's good. By the way, Nando used to play in first division a few years ago. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's still in Cyprus, no? Or no? He's still in Cyprus, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure he, what he plays now, but I'm sure that he's still in Cyprus. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he loved Cyprus, so I'm yeah, sure he's yeah, still yeah. there. I know. I know. So, as we said, you have now you launch uh, in 2000 was it 2019 when you launch your yeah clothing your brother? yeah 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 so whose idea it was was it your idea was it your brother's idea was it is daniel isn't it yeah daniel no it was it was it was like kind of both because like uh as i said before my mom's from the uk so uh when we were growing up uh we were very into the UK style of dressing, like tracksuits, uh, technical stuff. Uh, 
And so we used to buy a lot of clothes over in the UK and then dress it here in Spain. So it got to a point where it was more expensive to buy stuff in the UK and, and bring it to Spain than to make our own clothes. So we were like, okay, let's start making a brand. Let's make clothes for us and let's see how, how, how it goes. So we started a first brand in 2016 called DMW brand. Um, and that was just like a, a test. It was just like something we, 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 we tested a lot with that brand. We, we tried to study a little bit the, the fashion industry through that brand. And then in 2019, we, we thought we, we had at least the knowledge to start a, a more sophisticated brand. So that was when Warburton came. And, and then I did like a few years of uh, pattern making and, and sewing. And my brother did uh, a master in fashion. So, so yeah, so then we started like, you know, get more in, like more deeply into the fashion industry, get to know more how it works. Uh, but yeah, like everything started just because like both of us were like, okay, instead of buying clothes in the UK, let's just make it ourselves and see how it goes. David, which, which clothing brands were you shopping from in the UK? um okay so so i'm i'm so the thing is like in the uk uh they were like when you when i went to jd in the uk or to or to um uh or to like similar shops in the uk like jd uh this the nike tracksuits that they used to sell in the in the uk are not that are not the same nike tracksuits that we get in spain like even yeah. even at that time, like we didn't have JD in Spain. Now we do have, but we didn't have it at the time. So so we used to buy a lot of Nike, uh, and then also um, we we bought we bought some trap star too uh, from the UK. Okay. Uh, okay. And um, but it was mostly like all the Nike tracksuits we didn't see in Spain, and and then okay some pieces from trap star, and um, and then uh, yeah I would say I would say mostly it would be Nike. It's like, uh, as I said, like here in Spain, we didn't have those Nike tracksuits that they used to sell in, in the UK. So, so I would say that, yeah. Because yeah. I remember 10, 15 years ago, there were two brands that were really doing well, especially in London. And it was Evisu and Averex. Oh, and they I were the, they were, yeah, they, they were the clothing lines that a lot of the grime artists like Skepta and all of those used where? to. Because Skepta used to go to my school. Skepta was about four or five years below me at, at school. Um, so I remember when... I'm not going yeah, to ask, got... ask when was that. <laughs> well, listen, I went up, when I was at school, it was, it was the 90s. So it was a long time ago. But Skepta was five or six years below me. Um, I've got, yeah. I've got people... Because he's from the same area as me. So I know people that know yeah. him. Boy Better Know, yeah. Jamie, all them lot. So yeah, you know, yeah, we're all yeah. connected I'm a, in some I'm way, huge, shape, or form. I'm a huge fan of uh, all the BBK movement, like... That's not me. Uh, Come Skepta. on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm we, like, we're a huge fan of, of, of Skepta. Like, ev like all the stuff he's done, like, culturally uh, for the UK, also, like, for the fashion industry. Like, for me, he's, a, he's one, he's, a, he's a, a guy to look up to, you know? Bro, I'll tell you what, if you come to North London ever, you hit me up and we'll, we'll go find that I guy. will Don't do. Worry. I will do. I will do. Thank I'll, you. I'll start following you on Instagram. I, I've, I found your Instagram account. Yeah, and okay. I know that, that sorry, sorry to digress here, but a friend of mine also follows you who actually used to play for um for Alaves and Barcelona, Andrea Orlandi. Who? Oh, yeah, 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 Andrea Orlandi, yeah, yeah. I've known Andrea for a while, so you know, come on, come on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, so, small right, sorry, Sodiri. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I've taken know. over. I've taken yeah. over. This is yours, bro. This is yours. Come on, did you have thought that? Uh, your clothing brand, you become such a huge, huge brand when, when you started that back in the days. Did you ever thought that would become like a huge thing? Um, for, for me, uh, well, for us, uh, it's, uh, it's still not as big as we want it to be because, uh, like, obviously, we, we're like very ambitious people, and but we, we're very grateful for, for, for how things have developed through the years because, like, we we didn't expect things were going to go as fast as, as they went so so that's something to be grateful for but obviously for us the peak is like probably like five years from now you know 
so we, we we still have a lot of work to do because because our ambition is 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 like to be the best brand in spain or the biggest brand in spain that's good that's good i, I saw i saw you dressing up some big celebrities like rahim hayes yeah. the, the really supreme the german rapper and the, yeah I want you to tell us a bit about your friends, the big, the big celebrities you met through this clothing brand. Yeah. I know you knew mm -hmm. uh, you knew Damenti from back in the days when we, we used to yeah. live together. I knew him from yeah. these days. Uh, tell us a bit more about uh, Carlitos yeah. Arcaras. So, about yeah. uh, by the way, did you knew that Carlitos Arcaras is ranked now as a number one? above Djokovic and everyone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, That's I mean, you know, Ka Ka you know, Ka Carlitos is from Murcia. Is it? Really? Yeah, I just he's saw from the, he's from the story last week and I was like, oh, this guy. <laughs> yeah. <knows> everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he's from, he's from, he's from Murcia. He and, and then. The championship in, uh, in tennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's now playing Wimbledon. No, he's he's gonna start playing Wimbledon now. He's a favorite. He's yeah. a favorite with the bookies. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he wins. Hopefully, because he, he's a he's a really down down to earth guy. Like he he's super super nice, super nice. Like one of the best persons I've met through the, through the years for sure. Because like he's he's like young. He's got all the fame. He's got like all the money. He's got everything. And and still, when it comes to Murcia, he's he's just the same kid. You know and And that's something like we really appreciate here in Murcia. Um, I, and then I, I from, if, uh, I, I don't know if he's gonna watch this podcast, but if, if you are watching Alcaraz, you are more than welcome. Even if you are a <laughs> football podcast, you are more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Look uh, at this guy. <laughs> he's he's hustling. Uh, he's hustling on the pod. <laughs> of course, of course. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 of course. Um, and then and then for. Uh, The other um, like footballers or celebrities that I know that was that was um, that was back in the days when I used to work as a creative director for Ganga and as a manager. Um, I figured out that because like I used to get in contact with a lot of uh, footballers back then and try to send them T-shirts or send them like you know some of some pieces of our brand. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing is that we didn't receive feedback from them. You know, because like we would we were trying to send them pieces and get like pictures uh, of them wearing it or getting pictures of them on Instagram or whatever. So, uh, so by the time it, it, I felt like a little bit silly because like I was like investing money, making clothes, sending it, not receiving any any feedback. So, so I figured out back then that that if I if I get to meet these people and they knew me and they knew my vision and they knew. Where I was like trying to go to, uh, they would connect with me easily, not, e not easily but easier. So, so I st I started uh, offering them tattoos, you know, uh, and that that was when I started working with this tattoo artist. So I started offering tattoos, and and the reason why it was like I was thinking to myself, I cannot send a tattoo. I have to go there with a the tattoo artist and make it, you know. So, so we started traveling to Otamendi's house, and I get to know Otamendi, and then we went to to Odell Beckham Jr. and I knew Odell, and then we went to Drake, and and I met Drake, Chris Brown. Uh, so, so then the list kept kept growing because because also it was a new business. Uh, it, it wasn't being done before, like the two artists traveling this way, uh, like back seven years ago. Uh, To, to tattoo celebrities, so we started gaining a big name uh, of this, uh, and I started gaining like a lot of contacts and a lot of like very um, potential people for my brand too. So, so when the when the day came and and my brand was a more serious brand, and sophisticated, because like when I started doing this, I was never never like trying to bother no one with my brand. But when I thought my brand was like serious enough to to show them then i started like you know giving giving out pieces in a way where i can also speak with them and tell them hey i'm doing this because of this and this is the inspiration and so they they can really understand the reason why i'm doing this so 
so they give like a, a good feedback and also they try they try and to help me out to 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 you know to achieve my dreams so so that's that's how it happened really bro i'm not gonna lie i saw your uh your instagram post with the uh, otamenti and the world cup metal and i was jealous yeah. i'm not gonna lie i'm happy about yeah. you but <laughs> yeah yeah no that, that was that was uh like a few months ago so so yeah so so now the relationship turned from professional to personal and we had some some very uh good conversations in the past about him winning like big titles of uh, as the champions league or or the, or the world cup so when they lost the world cup in the final like i don't know what year it was Uh, they lost the final. Uh, they lost the World Cup in the final. Uh, after that, like we, we also had a lot of conversations. Like, bro, you need to win the the next World Cup. So when they won, when they won it, I I traveled to uh, Lisbon and and saw him. We had some food and, and then he showed me the the medal. And I was like, bro, I need to take a picture with this because like <laughs> back in the day, I, I used to I I want I used to want to be a footballer and I and this is like the biggest uh, uh, achievement you can get in football. So, so yeah, I threw that picture. It was a good, it was a great cool. moment. Also, super happy for him because like I know how work, how hard he works. So, super happy. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you mentioned Drake and Chris Brown, and they're two very, very popular and successful artists. No two ways about it. Chris Brown has made a bit of a comeback right now, but he never lost the ability and he's another one who creatively is superb as a dancer yeah. as a singer as a person though i've heard good things about him what are your experiences of chris brown uh chris brown super super good guy like we we went to his house in la and he treated us like very very well um super you know super uh, i don't know how you say this but he he was like offering uh stuff all the time like you know you want food you want something to drink you want this you want that so so very good experience like uh it was great and then drake drake also is 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 one of my idols like since since growing up because like i've grown up with this all his albums uh so so i was like very nervous to meet him uh but when i did like he's so like like for me like i've been listening to his music all my life and he's been my idol and I'm very uh, and I've been admiring him but when I met him that that grew like like times 10 because like he's such a good guy and and he treated us so well like we were, we were all, only supposed to be with them like three days in London when they were on tour and we stayed three weeks with them like they took us on tour we went to Amsterdam we went to Glasgow we went to so so the experience with Drake was was incredible and for me like it was a great moment he, he even did a tattoo of me he did this this like i don't know if you see but uh, <laughs> uh, the, the dot there yeah 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 <laughs> yeah he, like he did it like i was like bro i need you to do me a tattoo so he did this one <laughs> just did a dot brilliant brilliant yeah well david I've, i've got a question regarding social media marketing and branding Yeah. And obviously, there's a lot of competition right now in, in the fashion yeah. industry. And as you know yourself, there are other big organizations that are aligning themselves with these famous musicians, yeah. artists, sports people. Now, this is a conversation I've had with my dad. You know, he always used to say to me, oh, you know, the Beatles were the best because back in the, those days, there was only radio and there's not the facilities and the platforms that like social media that there are now. But if anything, my counter argument would be, it's even more competitive because you do have the ability yeah. to put up a post and all that. So in terms of the, the social media element, in terms of marketing, et cetera, how difficult has it been for you guys to, to gain some kind of foothold and, and a major following as a result? Have you relied a lot on these celebrities to help you or is this something that you guys are still looking at to, yeah. to grow and, and improve? So, so you know what, like at the beginning, because I was making all this, list of contacts we always thought like the the we, we always thought like uh, these people dressing our brand was going to make a lot of people buy our brand but the thing is like now because in the social in the social era we're living in uh, 
you're so used to see famous people wearing this brand, this brand, this brand, this brand. That doesn't make people uh, trust your brand as it, it could be like 10 years ago. If 10 years ago someone wore, wore your brand, maybe you, you would make a sold out next again day. But now people are so used to see all oh, this famous people wearing different brands that obviously you, you have to get all that moving, obviously, because it's, it's, a, it's, a it's a good marketing for you. But then there's a lot of other stuff you need to make yourself and, and like think yourself and, and build strategies to, to sell your brand, not only with the images of the people wearing your brand. You need to, to think a little bit more because like now it's, 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 it's all, you can see that like every, every single day with different brands and it's, not, and it's not that special anymore, you know? For me it is because like whenever I see someone famous wearing my brand, I'm, I'm super hyped, you know, because I'm, it's, for me, it's super special, but for the people, it's not special anymore. So you need to think a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And I think people such as yourself that are self-made, it's a big achievement because you started literally from scratch. You know, a friend of mine, Tam Khan, has got probably undeniably the best gym in Dubai and, you know, Badu Jack and all these other boxers, celebrities go there. Andrew Tate is a good friend of his. And he started from literally nothing, right? And this is a similar situation with you and your brother. You guys had a plan, but you worked on it and you built on it. But at the same time, you used your creative skills, but also your social skills. And I think it's important yeah. that people understand that it's not easy. You can't just put up an Instagram post. It's very, very rare that you will catch lightning in a bottle. If you look at, say, for example, KSI, another guy who you got to admire for what he's achieved, yeah. especially re with Logan Paul. These guys were content creators doing stuff in their bedrooms and they built themselves up, but it's a process and it's something that you need to trust in. And also this leads to my question in terms of your self-belief. How, how do you motivate yourself constantly every single day, knowing that there are going to be pitfalls and they're going to be issues and, you know, uh, I, I guess, uh, speed humps. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for, for us, like, it's um it's funny because like a few weeks ago i was in in the university here and in, in our city we did a speech and someone asked the same question and for me the answer is like right now we're doing stuff like we would do uh we, we would do for free you know like we we like right now we we're designing we are developing clothes we are uh you know putting our vision into clothes and i would do that for free and and that wakes me up every day you know so so because they they asked me in the university like what advice i would give to young entrepreneurs and and i was like you need to do something that you really you you really love because like you there's going to be days you don't want to wake up there's going to be days you don't want to to do this or that because like it's, it's it's very difficult situations and you get you have to get used to it but you need to wake up and you need to do all that and that would only happen if the thing you're doing you love and you have passion for it so so for us it's always been that like we whenever we had some doubts we always ask the same question will you do this for free and it was like yeah i would do this for free because like there's no other plan b you know brilliant brilliant well i mean i've got one more question before we let you yeah. go because obviously you're a busy guy and we appreciate your time gonna have a bit of fun with this question right so okay. As you know, as you know, in football, they have five asides, you know, those small yeah. pitches, five versus five. If you can think of your goalkeeper, defender, I don't know, maybe two midfielders and, and, a, and a striker, right? Out of all the, the personalities and the celebrities that you've met, who would be your goalkeeper, your defender, your two midfielders and your, two, and your striker? Oh, you could choose the formation. It's up to you. Okay. So from the people I've met... Um... A uh, goalkeeper would be um, uh, goalkeeper would be from Man City. I don't remember his name right now. Sorry. Um, uh, I'll tell you. Wait. Was he still playing there? Is he? Has he left? No, no, he's still there. The, the Brazilian guy. Um, oh, Edison. 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 Yeah, I would okay. say Edison. Then I would I would put like uh, Odomendi and Stones. Okay. Um. So you met John Stones as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to put then, Drake at centre back. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Drake? No, I, I, I would, I would, I would live. Uh, I would try to to make Drake score the goals. Uh, okay. No, but, okay. Um, 
I would put also Aldo Beckham Jr. to run the the wing. And, okay. Okay. And I then, see yeah. And then, okay. And then we can put Drake up in the front. Nice. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you would put like um, Beckham Jr. in defense. To be honest. <laughs> and you defense. Know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he, yeah. He's, you know, he's a, he's a, um, how do you say, runner, runner back? Yeah, running back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you need that pace over 100 meters, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well, David, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on this podcast, okay. man. It's, uh, it's truly an honor. Thank you. And uh, we're going to put all of the uh, socials in the description. People, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow David, obviously, on Instagram. All the socials Amazing. are going to be in the, uh, in the uh, description. So, Diddy, I'll leave it up to you, man. Yeah. I'll let you end the pod. It's, it's your friend. And again, thank you very much, David. Give yourself. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. Okay. We're back. Yes. That's it. Go on, so did he wrap it up, my friend? So, bro, appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for being here, for uh, being uh, with us uh, for the last 45 minutes. You know that you're a busy man, as we say. Uh, it's my pleasure to have you on my first podcast on This Is Mappa. Couldn't get any better. <laughs> and wish you all the best. Luck. And see you soon. Yeah. See you soon. I'll yeah, come hopefully. With I will come with Chester in uh, in Murcia when you invite us. <laughs> yeah, you have to come. If you if you ever if you ever come to Spain, you have to let me know, and I and I will organize something for sure. For sure, for sure. Thank you very much, David. We'll be back very soon, boys and girls. Thank you for tuning in.